what is what is up everyone hope everybody is is all good so uh, you might have seen me i've been talking about this on on twitter um, over the last couple of days it all comes from a, a video of a, a young kid failing a, a one rep max bench attempt and the spot that is behind him and he didn't want to lift the lift the barbell off him now it just got me thinking about one rep max testing and it's a it's a plague which you go to any gym and what are you going to see? You're going to see a bunch of kids loading up the bench press with weights that they can't handle trying to rep out, uh, trying to get a one rep max or always shooting for a PR on a, on a deadlift with shit technique. Just, just, it's just daft. It's stupid behaviour. Now, I wanted to go in, go into the reasoning why, why it doesn't make sense in the first place and just, you know, how how we can go about making our training just that much more effective because again we're in 2023 and people are still trying to do one rep maxes and trying to get bigger okay so let's get into it so you've got to look at the goal why why are most of us why are most of us in the gym unless we're a powerlifter or a strength athlete whether we do weightlifting strong uh, strongman athletes or powerlifting we were in there to get jacked we're trying to build muscle we're trying to get bigger we're trying to look in better shape. That takes care of most of the gym population, okay? That's just the fact. Very minority of people who want other goals in the gym. So, we want our training to be set up in a way that is going to maximise our time efficiency in order for us to get jacked. Doing anything other than that would be just low IQ thinking. Why would you want to do that? You want to maximise everything that you're doing in the gym to get the most out of it. Now, most of us are trying to get jacked. So, what do we need to do? When we talk about um, one rep max attempts, they are a waste of training economy. We are not going to get bigger from a one rep max attempt and coming in each week and trying to load a bench press or whatever lift it may be uh, and trying to lift uh, one reps, um, maximal force, maximal effort on that. We're not going to get bigger from that. Now, why is that? Let's look and and understand the mechanisms behind hypertrophy and getting bigger. So the prime driver of hypertrophy is mechanical tension. It's not volume like a lot of people think. We need just enough volume and enough mechanical tension. Now, what is mechanical tension? How does that happen? Now, it happens towards the end of a set where we're going to recruit a maximal uh, high threshold motor units towards the end of a set. Now, these are responsible for the most growth, and again, they, they take let's say we're doing a set of 10 and um, you're only going to start to recruit these high threshold multi units as you get to the rep six rep seven so towards the end of the set we're responsible for producing the most amount of force so probably we, ho- we probably have around four or five uh, effective reps per set now they're also they're known as effective reps now let's say in a set of five to thirty We'll have about five of those, as I just mentioned. So anywhere in that five to thirty rep range, as long as you, if you're training close to failure, you're gonna have four or five effective reps in that set. Now, just to reiterate that point, let me get into the the, the slide or the the image by Chris Beardsley. Now, this is, again, I've referenced Chris Beardsley a few times in, in a couple of other videos. Now, this is something that came out a couple of years ago. Now. If you look at these reps here, one, two, three, four, these are the reps where we are going to be uh, recruiting the high threshold motor units. These are the most stimulating reps. So as I said before, in a set of 10, the first five reps, it's not like they're a waste of time, but the first five reps of a set of 10, they are a means to an end to get you to this point here. So if we start a 10 RM load here, you see, uh, the first the first one, two, three, four, five reps are just a means for us to then recruit the last five or the five effective reps, so to speak. So if, when we look at this, if if we wanted to go and do one rep max attempts, how many one rep max attempts would we need to do in, in order to accumulate enough mechanical tension and volume together? in order to trigger the hypertrophy response, you would probably have to do 15, 10 to 15 one rep max attempts. Now, nobody is going to go in the gym and do that. That is an extremely inefficient way to train. Now, as I say, we need we need to obtain 
enough volume of these effective reps to trigger the hypertrophy adaptations. Now, look at these two examples. If we had, if we take these, these uh, three sets of six and three sets of one, if we take, now let's take, we take all of these sets to complete failure, okay? If we done a set of three by six, we're going to accumulate over those three sets a good 12 to 15 effective reps from three sets, okay? As I say, the first rep might not recruit all the high threshold motor units, but as you get into the, the second and third and fourth rep of this set of six, you are going to accumulate more effective reps, especially if we're taking it close to failure. So we're going to, we're going to accumulate 12 to 15. It's going to be enough to trigger the high pair to be response. But if we've done three sets of one, we're going to accumulate you know, three effective reps with a ton of extra fatigue. Now, as you can imagine, doing a one rep max deadlift versus three sets of six, which, which one is going to be more fatiguing? It, it's doing the, the, the one rep max set. That's just, it's going to, that's going to fuck you up. If you're doing three of those just to get three effective reps, it's, it's inefficient. It's not enough to trigger hypertrophy, not enough volume. So then again, it's just a waste of training economy. So if you're trying to get bigger, this is shit. And this is what we're looking for, okay? Trying to accumulate enough effective reps, okay? So, what do we do with the information? Now, anywhere in that 5 to 30 rep range, if you spend most of your time in that 5 to 30 range and you train close to failure, you're going to build muscle, of course you are, because as you get towards the end of the set, you're going to recruit the high threshold motor units, whether that is a, a set of 10 or a set of 15, a set of 20. As long as you train close to failure, you're going to be good to go. There is some talking points about the 5 to 10 rep range being superior because if we get to a set of 15, 16, 17 and we start getting into the higher rep ranges, there's going to be a lot of uh, other types of fatigue which can then interfere with the recruitment of the high threshold motor units. So that's something we need to be aware of. The less that we can have other fatigue bleed into our training from other areas, if we keep the 5 to 10 rep range, you're going to have a better chance and stand yourself a better opportunity at recruiting the high threshold motor units or the effective reps a lot more efficiently, okay? So with one rep maxes, people say, the other argument that people have is, I want to use a one rep max attempt to uh, assess my progress. Well, why would you need to do that? Just assess your progress in that five to 10 rep range. If your lifts are going up in that five to 10 rep range, you can guarantee that you're building muscle. Let's say your 10 rep max bench was 100 kilo. And then over the course of the next the next six months, the next time you try the 10 rep max attempt, your bench is now 105 or 107.5 kilo. You can tell that you've gained muscle. If you standardize your technique and you haven't cheated on technique to improve that load, by the way, if you've done that and you've done it correctly, why do we then need to go and test the one rep max? Because we know that you've got stronger. We, we can guarantee or more or less be certain that you've, you've added some lean muscle tissue. So that argument is it's just it's, it's just stupid so save the one rep max attempts and the one rep max training for strength athletes whether that be power lifter a weight lifter strong man athletes just save it for them because that is the demands of their sport that is what they're going to compete in and they, and they are judged on so it makes sense for them to have that in there if you're someone who's just trying to get bigger it is it is not worth it okay the risk to, the risk to reward ratio as well it ain't worth it that you don't get enough stimulus and again you you will not see any any high level bodybuilder who will be maxing out doing sets of one if they are they're stupid the high level ones the high iq ones the ones who are actually doing the best in the sport will not be testing one net maxes you will very rarely see them go below sets of four sets of five and that will be a very 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 rare sight to see they're always going to be training in that five to ten rep range five to thirty rep range because that's where we can accumulate enough of those effective reps and enough volume of those uh, mechanical tension driven reps okay so hopefully hopefully that makes sense now when it comes to the one rm attempts as well if you if you are going to do them and someone was going to do them like the power lifters do and weight lifters do they they prepare their bodies to do that properly they will not just rock up to a competition one day and, and do a one rep max attempt their training three to four months prior to that will lead up to that event. They will be doing sub-maximal singles. They will do, be doing a lot of heavy sets in that one to three range. They, they will be priming their nervous system, their connective tissues, their joints. They, they will be preparing their body to handle one rep max loads. 
and then they taper into a competition, they peak into it, they taper down, bring, bring fatigue down, and they get ready to express their maximal strength on the platform. It's all prepared for. They don't just do it randomly like a lot of these gym bros do, and that's why a lot of them get hurt, these gym bros. So, again, final point. Don't do dumb shit in the gym. Make it make sense. Everything that you're doing in the gym needs to have some thought behind it. Just, again, this is how you're going to get the best results in the gym. Don't just do random stuff that you, you see other people doing. And other, and you might see some some big fella in the gym doing some bullshit. Don't just blindly follow them. Think think before you act in the gym. You should have a, a good, good reason behind absolutely everything you do. If I asked you a question and said, why are you doing that exercise and why are you doing it in this rep range? If you can't tell me a specific answer why you're trying to do that, you probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place, okay? So, don't follow trends, think for yourself and just make it make sense, okay? That's the overriding theme. So, that's the video. Let me know what you think. Anyone, any got, got any questions for me, anything like that? Yeah, any other video ideas, just drop them down below. Okay, and hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you all in the next one.